Here he recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Fallon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like to take you back to spring of 2021. Uh, it was in April of that year that you and other military senior leaders were discussing a drawdown in the war with Afghanistan and war in Afghanistan with President Biden. Uh, he didn't take your advice, and but like a good political appointee, you publicly uh, remain supportive of his decision. Would you describe the uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan as closer to a success or closer to a failure? Uh, I, I, I would say that I'm proud of the work that our, our, our troops did uh, in, a, in a very challenging situation and uh, proud of the uh, support that we provided to uh, Afghan, uh, Afghans who, were, who wanted to exit the country and we didn't, uh, were not able to support all the folks that uh, we wanted to support, but that effort, effort, that effort continues uh, as we speak today. So let me ask you that question again because it didn't get answered. Would you describe it closer to a success or a failure? I think, uh, you know, again, it was a very challenging situation. I think uh, we were uh, successful in, uh, in getting uh, in, in retrograding our people and our equipment under very challenging in, uh, situa in a very challenging situation, and we were able to help a number of Afghans as well. In the, in the 18 months prior to this administration coming to office in, in January of 2021, how many American lives did we lose in Afghanistan? I'm sorry? Prior to Joe Biden becoming president in the prior 18 months, how many Americans did we lose in Afghanistan? How many military service members? Uh, very few. I'd have to go back and check the record. I think it's exactly zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then we lost 13 lives under uh, this administration's watch. 5,000 prisoners broke out of Bagram. We left billions of dollars worth of equipment. The Afghan army disintegrated within two weeks. And General McKenzie, uh, General Milley, and I believe yourself as well, when we had a discussion in 2021, could not guarantee me or the American people that any of those 5,000 scumbags that did escape from Bagram weren't involved in the murder of the 13 service members that occurred under uh, your watch. And why didn't we maybe have a withdrawal when it wasn't prime fighting season? I mean, all these questions, uh, they, they, this, I think, in large measure, could have been avoided. And then uh, just a little... Uh, walk through history here in the last couple of administrations. Uh, Vladimir Putin, a lot of my colleagues have talked about Ukraine. In 2008, Vladimir Putin stole uh, a province from Georgia, and it was under George W. Bush's watch. And then 2014, he stole all of Crimea under uh, Barack Obama's watch. And then a Russian-supported insurgency in eastern Ukraine kicked off as well. And then, uh, Mr. Secretary, President of the United States from 2017 to 2021 was... Do you are aware who that was? Uh, 2013? 17 to 21. Who was the President of the United it's, States? It, of course, it was, uh, it, it was uh, President Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. Did, were there any new, did Vladimir Putin embark on any new foreign adventures in those four years? Uh, he didn't, uh, but... Okay, thank uh, you. And then, uh, and then February 2022, what happened? You know, he... Certainly, I mean, that's when he attacked uh, Ukraine. and Full-scale invasion, almost 200,000 regular Absolutely. Russian yeah. troops. So I think that if we were more concerned with our military uh, projecting power and not worried about personal pronouns, it would be better for the American people and, quite frankly, the free world. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.